podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV. As state and national legislative bodies convene for their 2011 sessions, health care is at the forefront of their discussions. Mitchell Lewis recently sat down with the CEO of UNC Healthcare System, Dr. William Roper, to learn more about health care issues and needs in our state. Dr. Bill Roper, always a pleasure to have you here on North Carolina Now. Glad to be here, Mitch. Thank you. Dr. Roper, you just stay busy with so many titles, so many things to do. You're the Dean of the School of Medicine, the Vice Chancellor for Medical Affairs, and you're also the CEO of the UNC Healthcare System. Now, as someone who has a close view on healthcare here in North Carolina, what do you see as some of the healthcare challenges facing our state? Sure. Uh, we are a state that's growing in population and aging and uh, as we all grow older. Uh, we're going to need much more health care in the future and yet it is so very expensive. That's the number one issue that has long been pointed to and it still is the number one issue for North Carolina citizens. Health care costs way more than we think it ought to cost. Uh, secondly, uh, a lot of North Carolinians uh, don't fully participate in the health care system because they don't have health insurance, they don't have full access because uh, they're not doctors in their area uh, or other health professionals. And finally, there's some concerns about the level of quality of the services that people do get. So uh, while there are wonders being done every day for lots of North Carolinians in fine institutions across our state, we've got some problems that need attention. Now, as we look at the state budget, and it seems like there is a projected $3.7 billion okay. deficit okay. that legislators will have to deal with. In their dealing with this, how will this affect health care in North Carolina and especially within the UNC health care system? Yeah. Uh, the state uh, budget is a problem. The governor, the leadership of the legislature, especially the new leadership of the legislature, are spending a lot of time right now figuring out what they can do and what they are going to call on us as citizens to do to, to deal with that, that shortfall. Uh, one of the very largest components of the state budget is Medicaid, which is funded by the federal government and the state government, but it's a lot of state dollars. And they are saying, we got to cut Medicaid. And I, I, I wish that were not the case, but the numbers surely point you that direction. Uh, if they cut the Medicaid program, that will have a direct impact on us and on other institutions like us that serve the poor and the indigent and those who are on the Medicaid program. Um, uh, we face some very difficult choices in North Carolina. Indeed, other states do as well. Taking a look at the federal level, uh, parts of the Federal Health Care Reform Act has taken place. How do you see this impacting health care here in 2011? Yeah. Um, I've been a strong advocate for reforming health care at the federal level. Uh, what the Congress passed almost a year ago now, which was signed by the president, uh, is not perfect. It's not what exactly I would have done if I were king for a day and could sort of make it happen. Um, but I think it's important steps forward that need to be implemented. But as you're seeing in Washington again, it's controversial. Uh, it's politically controversial. It's programmatically very complex. And I don't think the public either understands or likes what has been legislated. And so this is a, uh, a, a real morass, if you will. And it's hard for me sitting here uh, at the beginning of the year to predict exactly what's going to happen. But my urging is that, that we press ahead because we can do better for Americans than the system that we've got right now. It, it doesn't do well for the 10 percent of our population that are w without health insurance. It costs way too much, as I said a minute ago, and it is of dubious quality in many respects. Now, of course, there has been a shift in the U.S. House of Representatives, and it is yep. Republican-controlled, and Republicans are saying that they're going to uh, reform and also, uh, I guess, get rid of the current yep. package and try to reform, re-reform, if yep. you will. 
What type of impact will, will, will that have yeah. on health care? I think the mantra that they're uh, reciting these days is uh, repeal and replace. And uh, uh, although they are going to try, they say shortly, to take a vote in the House on an outright repeal, and it may pass the House given the numbers there. Um, I don't think there's any realistic chance that it will pass both House and Senate and then be signed by the President, especially the President doesn't want to be uh, the person agreeing to repeal what has been his most significant domestic policy achievement. So we're in for lots of squabbling in Washington. I think more likely than an outright repeal is they're going to try to slow down the implementation. They're going to try to hold lots of hearings and point to the, uh, the, the, the problems in the law and the complexities involved. and. Um, one of the challenges that the whole health reform uh, uh, legislation faces, the Accountable Care Act, as it is officially known, is uh, that it's not just one piece of legislation. It's, you know, hundreds, thousands of pages that does, taken together does lots of different things. And so it's impossible for somebody to come on a program like yours and say things even to your intelligent viewers that come across understandable because this is woefully complex. So my point is it suffers from an identity crisis. People say, what is health reform? Some people say it's death panels. It's really not that. Some people say it's government takeover of health care and it's surely not that. But what is it? Well, it's a lot of little things which taken together will give health insurance to maybe 32 million more people and over the long term maybe do some things to reduce the rate of increase in the cost of health care and over the long term improve some things about the quality of care and the effectiveness of the services that are there. But that's pretty vague for most Americans. We're going to come back to the state now. Yeah. Now recently you opened two new branches of the medical school in Charlotte and Asheville. Right. Talk about right. these openings. Sure. Uh, the UNC School of Medicine, based in Chapel Hill, of course, has long depended on partner institutions around the state to train our medical students. We've long sent med students to Greensboro and Raleigh and Wilmington and Charlotte and Asheville and so on. Uh, but we've decided to, in a concerted, focused way, open branch campuses, as you say, mm -hmm. in Charlotte and in Asheville which will permit us to, to have a cohort of our students, part of the class each year, spend most all of their time in one or another of those cities. Ultimately, it's our dream to have 50 students per class in uh, Charlotte and 20 students per class in Asheville. Uh, we think that they will get not only just as good, but maybe even better medical education there than we're able to give them uh, at our at the mothership, so to speak, because of the smaller numbers and focused attention that, that they will receive. Uh, in the middle of October, I was privileged to go to Charlotte and go to Asheville and participate in the ribbon cuttings of those uh, new campuses. And people there are really excited to be participating in uh, medical education, and, and we're really excited to be partnering with them. We've talked about some of the challenges. What do you see as one of the accomplishments when it comes to health care? Yeah. Um, one of the things that I'm particularly proud of is I think we are making incremental but real progress in getting a message across to the American public about uh, healthful living. Um, I don't claim that we've uh, won the victory yet. Way too many people smoke. Too many people are overweight. But I think the message has gotten across and individual Americans and individual North Carolinians are saying, I, I've got to do something about this. It's, it's the first of the year. People are now making New Year's resolutions, I know. And, and I think there's real grounds for encouragement that, that people are beginning to take more responsibility for their health. Ultimately, um, the government can't do it all. Uh, doctors and hospitals can't do it all. People have to lead healthier lives. And, and I think we're making some progress in that regard. Um, a second thing that I'd point to is the whole health reform legislation. 
Yes, it's still up for grabs. Yes, we're still arguing about it, as I said a bit ago. Uh, but I'm encouraged that a lot of people stepped up in 2009 and 2010 and said, it's time we got serious about making the American healthcare system work better for all Americans. And even that, though it's not fully accomplished, is something to be proud of. And if our viewers wanted to find out more about the UNC healthcare system, uh, where can they go? Oh, I'd love for them to call or email me, but uh, the, the best way to find out about us is to, if they don't come visit, uh, go to our website, which is uh, unchealthcare.org, and uh, they can find out lots of information about what we're doing. Uh, we serve the people of North Carolina, just like uh, your program reaches them all, and uh, we are delighted to have the privilege of serving the people of this good state. Dr. Bill Roper, always a pleasure to have you here on North Carolina Now, and thank you for your insights. Glad to be here. Thanks for the opportunity. Podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV.